What's up guys, it's James here from Smoking UK where we review, communicate and educate on all things tobacco. Today, I'm gonna to be diving back into a cigar that I haven't smoked since visiting the factory itself in Nicaragua back in February. And of course, that is the My Father Connecticut in the Robusto. I smoked so many of these when we're out there and I can't wait to dive a little bit deeper into it with you guys. And hopefully I get that reminiscent feeling. So let's run the intro, let's get it cut, let's get it lit. Run the intro. First of all, before we start cutting it, before we start lighting it, the one thing I love about my father's cigars, probably more than most other cigars, is the presentation on the sticks. So much time and so much effort goes into the actual design of the band itself. There's a reason when you walk into a humidor like ourselves that these things stick out. You can walk into a humidor full of thousands of different cigars and a my father's cigar will always catch your eye. And I absolutely love that. But we'll dive a bit deeper into the band a bit later. I'm dying to get this lit up. So I'm just going with a straight cut today. I am going to do a dry draw. It's nice. It's open. A little bit of tension, which is what I like on a cigar. Actually, I don't like it being too open. I don't want it like thinking like I'm sucking through a milkshake straw. That's really light. It's floral, it's creamy. I already know this is going to be a great smoke, so let, let, let's just get it Let's get it lit. You tell I'm a bit, uh, bit excited to get this on the go today. Of course, it goes without saying I am using the Smoking Single Jet Flame Torch. I'll leave a link in the description below. I'm not just saying it because of ours, but we've actually had multiple people come back to us saying it is one of the best cigar lighters people have used, so we'll take it. Absolutely beautiful. And those stereotypical Nicaraguan spicy flavor profiles are coming straight away with that initial light up. It's like being back there again. It's gonna be one of those kind of videos, guys. It's gonna be a bloody reminiscent one. What a fantastic cigar. And I think the one thing I love about this cigar so much is normally most people, especially if you've been smoking cigars for a while, will stay clear of the Connecticut wrappers because they think it's going to be too mild, it's too bland. Yet this one comes out the gate strong. We say in all our videos, your first initial light up is going to be strong. It is going to be more bitter. It is going to be more spicy. We know that. But this is going to be a constant thing throughout the stick from my memory. There is a beautiful balanced spice that carries through the entire stick. If you, on this initial light up, it's probably stronger than some medium to full body cigars that I've smoked, which have no Connecticut tobacco in it at all. That's how much it comes off the gate. But I like a bit of spice in my cigars, so uh, I'm loving it. And those stereotypical flavors are coming through. There's a beautiful nutty flavor on the exhale as well. Those cedar profiles and that spice is kind of rounding it all up here, the back of the palate. All in all, it's coming together like a beautiful little symphony to create a fabulous stick. We've also got a great burn on the go as well. And that's the one thing I can guarantee with all my father cigars. Their construction is second to none. Like I said before, we smoked loads while we're out there. I've still got quite a few in the humidor since being out there. And the one thing I never, ever have a problem with with my father's cigars is one, getting it lit, two is construction, and three is a great burn. I never have any of those problems. They are built solidly. Now that's one thing you gotta admit. That is an absolutely stunning looking cigar, especially when you see them all lined up in a box. They're absolutely beautiful. So let's have a look a little bit more into the actual construction behind this stick. So we have an Ecuadorian Habano wrapper with a Nicaraguan Corojo 99 binder. It's definitely where all those spicy profiles at the back of the palate that we're getting is coming from. We have a Nicaraguan Habano Carrillo 
villa, which both come from the Garcia family farms, which we visited. It is a little bit larger on the scale when you compare to the most stereotypical Robustos of a 5x50. And we have a 5 and a quarter by 52 ring gauge. Now, like I said in the last video, in the last cigar review that we did on the Christophs, I love the 52s and the 54s ring gauges. I think it fits in the hand perfectly. You're not forcing your fingers open like you're smoking a Gordo Plus, but at the same time, you're also not putting your finger together like you're smoking a cigarette. It kind of becomes one with you it becomes part of your hand it's not an object that you're holding it becomes part of you we got really deep on that one didn't we like i said before this is a medium body smoke and the strength that i'm getting on the palate and flavor the strength i'm getting from the smoke and the body in general i completely agree with that it's not extremely light it's lighter compared to some cigars that we've had on the channel but it's not so medium and full bodied that i know i'm going to feel it after it's definitely medium, I completely agree. Absolutely stunning. The one thing I haven't done yet is a retro hail. And don't worry, we do have a video coming very soon teaching you how to retro hail. A lot of people in our last video asked for that and requested for that video. So we've got that coming. So let's have a look to see if those flavor profiles I'm getting and the mouth are heightened through the nose or if we discover a new flavor profile altogether. Those nutty profiles that you only really get on the palate once the smoke has been exhaled from the mouth and you're moving that saliva around after and you've got a lingering nutty taste almost like a hazelnut on the tongue that's really heightened when taken through the nose and now that it's kind of there and it's lingering and i'll be doing a retro hail every two to three puffs i think that's just added something new to the smoking experience that ash is going strong but it looks like it is going to fall off and i don't fancy wearing it down on my my father t-shirt so i am going to tap that away work away beautifully however i am getting a little bit of coning now this is common and what that basically is telling me is i'm smoking a cigar too fast and i'm puffing on the cigar too much i'm not giving the tobacco in the center here enough time to burn away whilst the outside is being burning quicker because i'm puffing on it so what that's telling me is i need to slow down a little bit the only problem is i absolutely love this cigar so i puff and puff and puff and puff away in it like i'm a bloody steam train <laughs> however this cigar is making me really reminiscent of being back there i remember it was the second day of being in nicaragua a second full day in nicaragua when we were visiting the factories and we saw Hoya on the first day, the Hoya de Nicaragua, which was an absolutely stunning operation to see. Got to see all the history. It was a very traditional cigar factory. What you think a cigar factory would look like, Hoya hit the nail on the head. And then it came to my father the next day. And it was such a modernized operation. I've never seen a floor so clean than in that rolling room. I'll show you videos now while I'm talking about it. You could have eaten your dinner off of that floor. It was absolutely beautiful. And I'd never seen a rolling room so large. And it was absolutely spectacular to see. And the one thing I love about my father is how innovative they are with their entire operation as well. They cover everything from seed sourcing down to the final boxes that the cigars go in. They even invested in pigs to create their own manure to be used on the farms as well, instead of having to import it or source it from somewhere else, which was absolutely amazing. Another thing that they do, which really struck me and really surprised me on the day, is we obviously went round the wood shops, which was extremely warm because of all the machinery. They take the heat produced from the machinery to create the cigar boxes and they take that heat and they use it in other aspects of the factory. Nothing goes to waste. They almost had their own green sustainability system going on around the entire factory. And the factory is absolutely huge. I wish I clocked the amount of steps I did just walking around the factory itself. It was an absolutely beautiful operation. Of course, we got to actually meet Don Pepin Garcia himself, which was an absolute idol in my eyes and if you don't know anything about him 
seriously go and research this man the amount of things this guy has done for the cigar industry is outstanding and it's not surprising that his children started up my father's cigars in honor and in name of don pep and garcia himself probably the scariest aspect is that we actually got to roll our own cigars ourselves which was an experience in itself but then Jose Peppers and Garcia actually got to, uh, he actually judged it. He actually came along and judged it whether he would sell the cigar or not. Luckily, he said to me he would actually accept that as a cigar. So I'll take that. That is the, probably the best compliment I got that entire week. But it was amazing how hands-on, bearing in mind his age, this guy was. When we jumped back into the minibus, we went up to see the My Father Farms. He still came up. He very much was a, if someone's going to show you around my farms, it's going to be me kind of thing. It was an absolutely amazing day. And to be honest, now I'm smoking this cigar, I'd do anything I can to get back there. But this is smoking and developing beautifully. What I'm gonna do guys, I'm gonna sit back, I'm gonna enjoy the rest of this cigar. Join me just as we reach the back of the band. I'll give you my overall verdict. What kind of drink would I pair with this? And more importantly, what kind of cigar smoker would I recommend this for? Join me in a minute. What's up guys, welcome back. This cigar has been absolutely exceptional from start to finish. When you normally hear Connecticut in a title, you normally think, oh, it's gonna be really light, it's gonna be really good morning cigar, which this would be. But a lot of people stay clear of it. This is nothing like anything else within that range. It isn't light in the slightest. It's not full bodied at all, but it's not light in the slightest. It's definitely medium bodied. It is full of complex flavors, and that's definitely coming from those two mixed Nicaraguan tobaccos from the Garcian family's farm. It's a real complex cigar. It starts off really spicy, and that spice continues throughout the cigar, but it's not full on. It's very much back here at the back of the palate. You can definitely taste it, but it's not overpowered. It's definitely not the most dominant flavor profile you're gonna get in the stick. It's really nutty very creamy you get a lot of cedar which is really common with Nicaraguan cigars but that nutty note especially on the retro hail it's just been dominant from start to finish and I've been absolutely loving it it's almost like a hazelnut it's beautiful what kind of drink with a pair of it coffee absolutely I think with the balance between the nuttiness and the spice with the coffee especially if you have it sweet with milk like I do or like a latte or a cappuccino you're going to get almost like this burnt caramel kind of flavour profile. And I think it's going to work absolutely beautifully together. We're going to get alcoholic root rum. I know I say it a lot and I can blame the smoking lot. Paul Green, this one's on you, mate. Slowly making me a rum drinker. But rum would pair absolutely beautifully with it. It really would because you've got a nice sweetness, especially like a darker rum would be beautiful with this stick. Personally, I think if we're going to go down the whiskey's route, I think scotch is going to overpower it too much. Bourbon, absolutely. Irish, definitely. Welsh, 100%. I think there's going to be some good whiskies out there. You essentially don't want a really smoky whisky. So some scotches might work, like a Feta Kern 16 would pair gorgeous with this sick. What kind of cigar smoker would I recommend it for? Honestly, I think if you're looking at it for your very first cigar, it's a weird one because it's not the strongest cigar in the world but because of all those complex flavors especially those spice especially from the Corojo that's in the binder it, 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 it's stronger than most cigars in this profile I don't it wouldn't be a bad first cigar I think there are better cigars to start your journey with something maybe a little bit more lighter but if you've had one or two, yeah, absolutely. Throw yourself in. I think you're going to love it. If you've been smoking cigars for years and you're used to those full body textures and those full bodied flavors, I think it's going to be a beautiful morning to afternoon cigar. I think if you're going to have it as an after dinner, I don't think it's going to hit the nail on the head. But all around, it's still a great cigar. I think you're going to love it. I think it's one of these that you've got to have it in the humidor. Just sat here smoking it is honestly, I've been looking at ticket prices for airplanes to go back out to Nicaragua. It's absolutely beautiful. So I think it's definitely one you need to be adding to your basket. So that's it, guys. Thank you for coming along with me on this rediscovery journey and a little bit of a reminiscent uh, kind of discovery with this cigar again it's been a few months since i've actually had one lit up and i can't believe i've left it so long to actually light another one up so thank you for coming along with me 
hit that subscribe button, enable your notifications. We post twice a week over here on this channel at seven o'clock on a Tuesday and seven o'clock on a Friday, sharing all our knowledge with you about tobacco. So make sure you enable your notification. Of course, go follow us on social media as well. We post every single day over there from events, giveaways, how to's, industry insights, promotions, snuffs, cigars, pipes, pipe tobaccos, you name it. We're posting about it over there and you're gonna expand your tobacco knowledge tenfold just by following us. So I'll leave the link in the descriptions below to go follow us over there as well. I've been James. Thank you again for coming along with us on our journey and welcome to the new era, smoking. I'll catch you in the next video.